Let me set the scene for you. It's a dry, staticky Santa Ana day in July 2001. The kind of day when a single spark can set a whole neighborhood ablaze. Everyone who has to be outside is at the end of their rope, ready to explode at the slightest provocation. The social contract that keeps us all from tearing each other apart is sitting on the edge of a knife. Entire worlds can be vaporized in one fit of rage. It's the kind of weather that makes people irritable, irrational, crazy. I'm with my friends. We're in Mira Mesa. Our mode of transportation? Rollerblades. <laughs> now, you're going to have to take this next sentence at my word. It's a leap of faith, I know. I wanted to be cool. <laughs> the cool kids rollerbladed. Like I said, leap of faith. I wanted to be friends with the cool kids. That's how I found myself anxiously hopping onto a truck and being driven from the Poway suburbs toward Mira Mesa by a guy who only had a learner's permit. This guy was Stuart. He was oddly shaped, tall, and chubby at the same time, and seemed like he would be more comfortable playing video games than doing any sort of physical activity. He didn't normally hang out with these cool kids we were with, but since he could use his dad's truck, it was decided that he would drive us. Since I was also the odd man out of this group, I wanted to get to know him, but he was too busy focusing on driving and looking scared out of his wits. So do the, well, what do we do if we get caught, like cops or something? Stuart tried to ask the car nonchalantly. Don't worry, said a cool kid named Bill. I've been caught by the cops a bunch, and they usually just make you leave with a warning. Just make sure you don't have any weed on you. Oh, OK, Stewart said. This would not end well. It was around noon when we arrived at the first spot, a middle school in Mira Mesa called Wagenheim. Because we were blocked off from the view of the street, we didn't have to worry about the cops seeing us. We climbed straight up over the fence and past the line of no trespassing signs and saw there were some local kids already rollerblading at the school. One of them was a Filipino guy with spiky hair also named Matt who I had met before. He introduced himself to my friends, offered them cigarettes, told a few jokes. He was one of those guys who would give you the blades off his feet if you asked him. <laughs> In fact, he offered me some of his middle's wheels when mine bro were broken the previous week. He introduced me to his other four friends. Their response was, hey. <laughs> this school had a bunch of handicap handrails, which we would jump on and grind down in weird foot positions. When a jump was attempted, the skates would clang on the metal while that kid ended up splayed on top of the bars. Stuart, in particular, fell down a lot. Soon it became apparent that at least half of us didn't have the balls to jump onto handrails, or if we did, we injured them in the process. So it was decided we would go across the street to skate some ledges in an open park. While the high fences of the school, sorry, without the high fences of the school to guard us, we were left vulnerable to any patrol car on safari. A large group of teen boys on rollerblades crossing the streets of Mira Mesa wasn't exactly inconspicuous either. But after a few minutes, I relaxed. Our group settled in. The cooler guys hung back in a shady area and smoked, while the others marked up the ledge with grinding from the plastic skates. Suddenly, I heard a commotion behind me. A rena cop had rolled up in a golf cart. By the time I saw it, he was in a shouting match with a member of our group. Even at a distance, it was obvious to tell that this red-faced police reject was hopping mad. So mad, in fact, that he had already called the real cops. <laughs> As if on cue, two patrol cars skidded to a stop behind him, kicking up a cloud of dust in a classic Dukes of Hazards fashion. I could tell from their bulletproof vests that they meant business. One of them ran out and grabbed the handle of the passenger side of his car facing us. What was he doing? I squinted in confusion, trying to figure out what he was doing, 
only to find out one horrifying second later, he released a fucking police dog. <laughs> Everything that happened next was a blur. I saw the triangular head of the big German shepherd as the cop pried the door open, still attached to a leash but clawing at the seat to get to us. We went with the most primal response we had, flight. I took off like a bat out of hell toward the street. I could hear the rapid fire click, click, clicking of the dog's nails on the concrete behind me and fe felt his vicious, booming barks. I heard yelling behind me, but I couldn't look back. I was skating on adrenaline. We tore across the street towards a neighborhood, feet pumping urethane against the hot asphalt. We must have skated five or six blocks away before someone ducked down an alleyway, leading the rest of the pack into hiding. A patrol car flew down the street two minutes later with its siren blaring. I collapse, my lungs pressing up against my rib cage like they were about to burst. We had escaped. Once the adrenaline started to wear off and we were able to breathe, we took a head count of everybody. There were five here, including me and Bill and da 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 da. What the fuck were they thinking with that fucking dog? It's not like we were robbing a fucking bank, Bill ranted. Then we realized the one person who was missing. Stewart. <laughs> oh no, I thought. Well, that's a bummer, Bill said, lighting up a cigarette to calm down. I guess we should go back and see what happened. He's my ride home and I'm starting to get hungry. <laughs> we went to see the aftermath from the opposite side of the street. The patrol cars were now in front of the park with aviator clad officers milling about. Then I saw the sorry shape of Stewart sitting on the curb with his face buried in his hands. I felt a sharp pang of sympathy in my gut. I felt like I had betrayed this guy, like he was a soldier left behind on the battlefield of rollerblading. <laughs> the guys who, were, who I thought were cool were here laughing at him, even though he took the fall for our bullshit. They could care less about what happened to the guy who had been driving them around everywhere, a guy who was supposed to be their friend. To add ultimate insult to injury, Stewart's mother rolled up on the scene in a minivan just as they were standing him up and cuffing him. She flew out towards the car with arms waving around like she was bringing a plane onto the tarmac. The cops tried to offer sympathy with her, tried to offer sympathy to her with one hand and kept their hands on their tasers with the other. A short time later, a tow truck appeared to take Stewart's dad's truck to the impound. My friend, well, probably not anymore, was having the worst day of his life. With no other options, Matt was kind enough to, to borrow his mom's car and drop us off at our respective houses. I was mostly silent. I felt guilt, shame, fear, and anger boiling together inside of me. Stewart may not have been the coolest kid on the block, but he, was, but he was still seemed like a nice guy. His only fault was that he wasn't as fast as the rest of us. <laughs> but these guys, who we both tried so hard to look cool for, ditched him as soon as things got tough. I never saw Stewart again after that. From what I heard, he had been let off with a warning at the police station. But because of the impounded truck, his parents grounded him for almost a year. I sat back and reflected on what had happened. So this is what being a cool kid was? Ditching the people who depended on you and worrying only about yourself? I decided at that moment that this kind of popularity was not for me. So I didn't get invited to any co more cool kid rollerblading sessions. So I don't know about you guys, but I think I dodged a bullet there. <laughs> Rollerblading wasn't cool anyway, so why try? <laughs> Instead, I made different friends. And although they didn't smoke weed or were popular at school, they were good friends to me. And that's all that mattered. Thank you.